In our previous video, uh, we proved the cauchy schwarz inequality, and the reason why uh, we've done that is because uh, we like to uh, prove the cremer rau lower bound. And so if you remember, the cremer rau lower bound gave us a lower bound for the variance of an unbiased estimator of a parameter. So we can actually go back a few slides here to see uh, the statement of the Cremera lower bound. It's important to note, well, of course, we have a random sample from uh, some distribution. And if we're estimating a function of theta using uh, some function of the sample, say t of x, um, we're supposing that the estimator is unbiased. And if we have an unbiased estimator, then we have a lower bound on the variance. So the proof of this claim um, will require uh, an application of the cauchy schwarz inequality, and so that's why we proved this in a previous video. And here, let's actually apply the inequality, and then um, we'll have some work to do uh, after the application of the inequality, and we'll talk about some of the steps for that. And I have uh, several you know, many results, some of which we've proven, some of which are just definitions that we'll need to use along the way in this inequality. So I've written them up top and I'll highlight exactly where we use each. So by the cauchy schwarz inequality, uh, we have that the covariance of the unbiased estimator with the derivative of theta, sorry, the derivative with respect to theta of the log likelihood. So this covariance squared will be less than or equal to the variance of our unbiased estimator times the variance of what we've called the score, right? The derivative with respect to theta of the log uh, PDF or log likelihood. Now, if you remember the statement of the Cremera lower bound, this variance is the the bound the thing that we want to come up with a lower bound for, and so. The lower bound will be this term here, this covariance term, divided by this term here. And this term here, if you remember, is exactly the Fisher information. So our notation for that was in of theta. And so a direct application of the cauchy schwarz inequality gives us the cremer rau lower bound as long as this term here is equal to the square of the derivative of tau of theta, whatever our function of the parameter is, basically the, the thing that we're trying to estimate. So what remains to be shown then is that this covariance here is equal to uh, the derivative of tau of theta. So the rest of what we need to do is just show that, right? Then uh, the Cremer rau lower bound that we wrote down holds because we just rearrange. And of course, we need this variance to not be exactly equal to zero, and we need it to actually converge. Those are part of the regularity conditions that we stated in class. So let's start with the derivative of tau of theta. And we'll end up using this property here. And note that, well, tau of theta is equal to the expected value of our estimator. And so the derivative of tau of theta will be equal to the derivative of the expected value of our estimator. And this is true because we're assuming we have an unbiased estimator, right? So that's where uh, we're using this assumption. So derivative of tau of theta is equal to the derivative with respect to theta of the expected value 
of t of x. And so here we're using the law of the unconscious statistician uh, that says take t of x and multiply by the pdf of x. So in order to understand the next step, I think it will be helpful to take a look at number five up top, where if we want to show that the derivative of tau of theta is equal to the covariance, if we look at the form of what we're aiming for, namely the, the covariance between the unbiased estimator of tau of theta and the score, well, that's going to be a, a, a multiple integral of the statistic or the estimator minus the true value. And then, so that's the, you know, one random variable minus its mean, right, if you look at the form of covariance. And then here, this is the other random variable, namely the score, minus its mean, which is zero, so that's why there's no, you know, minus its mean, it's implied, times the joint PDF, I should make that joint, uh, in integral over the, the vector x. So if we're looking to get our answer in this form, we'll need some term where, we where we're subtracting off a tau of theta. We need to incorporate that somehow in our integral. And so the idea will be to actually subtract off something that's equal to zero so that we don't change this equality and subtract it off in a strategic way so that uh, we, we get to where we need to be. So the idea will be to subtract off tau of theta times the derivative of the integral of the joint PDF. And we know that this integral is equal to 1. Right? We're integrating just a PDF, so by definition it's 1. And thus, this whole term here is equal to 0. So we've just subtracted off 0. And then our next step will be to use properties of integrals um, and use the fact that we can move our derivative inside of the integral. So we'll move our derivative inside of the integral and we will then combine these integrals. And basically we're moving this uh, tau of theta inside of the integral. It's an integral with respect to x, so this is a constant. So just a few properties of integration will get us to the point where we have the integral of our estimator minus tau of theta and then times the derivative with respect to theta of the joint PDF. So just to go back and highlight which properties we've used, we've used the second property above here in this equality. And, you know, in order to construct this subtracting off zero, we were looking at property number five to get there. So the next step will be to work with this term here. And the reason why we'll do that is because this doesn't quite look like the integral um, in the covariance definition yet because well we don't have the the p joint PDF in this integral yet we just we have the derivative of the joint PDF and even if we just had the joint PDF here it would look well not quite like the variance uh, but basically we just have one of the terms in the covariance minus its mean and we don't quite have the other uh, term of the covariance minus its mean, and then we don't have the joint PDF. So we still have some manipulating to do. And the trick here in the next step is to look at property three. So property three says, well actually the derivative of the joint PDF is equal to the derivative of the log of the joint PDF times the joint PDF. 
And that might look like an odd property, but I think if you think about it in a different way, it'll make more sense. Imagine if you were just evaluating the derivative with respect to theta of the log likelihood, log PDF. Um, if you were finding this derivative, it would be 1 over the uh, joint PDF times the derivative of the joint PDF. And so that's exactly this uh, expression right here, just with the um, basically with the joint PDF multiplied over. So we're using a fact about the derivative of the log of the likelihood function just rearranged in this next step. So I'll highlight uh, showing that we've used step three and should have the integral of our estimator minus tau and then we're substituting in here the derivative of the log of f of x times f of x and then it's the integral over the x's. And now this should look uh, exactly like our target, right? This is the covariance between the estimator and the score, which is written up here. So this is the covariance of the estimator with the score. And again, the reason for that is, well, this is a random variable minus its mean. And we're treating this as a random variable minus its mean. And that's because its mean is 0, right? So we're also using uh, property number 1 in recognizing that the mean of the score is 0. So we actually do have a covariance, random variable minus its mean another random variable implied minus its mean times its joint PDF and integral over x. So we've done it. We've got the covariance of those two terms. We've shown that that's equal to the derivative of, um, of tau of theta. And right now rearranging this inequality, basically dividing by the Fisher information, gives us the square of the derivative of tau uh, divided by the Fisher information is a lower bound for the variance of our estimator.